Situated between two state highways and sitting just west of the Missouri River, a passerby can easily miss the guard towers of the Lansing Correctional Facility, originally known as the Kansas State Penitentiary. In 1861, Kansas Governor Charles Robinson authorized the construction of a state penitentiary in Leavenworth County. Impressed by a prison in Joliet, Illinois, state-appointed commissioners chose to model the Kansas State Penitentiary after the Joliet prison. Erasmus Carr served as the architect for the new prison, and during his lifetime, Carr designed several important buildings in Kansas, including the Kansas State Capitol Building. Construction began in 1864. However, due to the Civil War, completion of the main building was delayed until 1867. The community around the prison has evolved, and much of that change has come about as a result of cooperation between those inside the walls and those on the outside. The origins of the city of Lansing date back to 1878, when William Lansing Taylor and a friend purchased and platted 90 acres of what is now Lansing. One of the earliest connections between the prison and the community was that Lansing's founding father worked as a hospital steward at the prison. Lansing officially became an incorporated city 81 years later in 1959. Even before incorporation, many local residents were interacting for decades with the inmates. Born in 1928, Lansing lifelong resident Gene Young grew up in the shadow of the prison. I, I really associated with uh, one of the trustees that, that uh, took care of all the flowers on the, what we called the, Lans the prison lawn. Uh, it was a beautiful area, two, uh, two sidewalks, and both sides of the so sidewalks were covered with flowers. And I would go over, and this inmate would, uh, he was a trustee, that would help me uh, uh, transplant flowers, tell me how to take care of flowers, how to, how to get flowers to root, and everything like that when I was about 10 years old. But my folks never worried about me going and talking to him. Young's father and uncle, as well as many other area residents, made their living working at the prison. A unique benefit of having a prison in Lansing was the coal mine, which dates back to 1881. The mine provided jobs for both inmates and local residents. Inmates excavated the coal, which was sold to state and local institutions, including Nine Mile School. One of the prison's early physicians, Dr. Robert Moore, lived in a home less than 200 yards from a prison gate, a house that today belongs to John and Mary Lee Wendell. It's a home and yard that is pleasing to the eye. Perhaps surprisingly, the Wendell's biggest competition comes from the landscaping around the institution to their east. Well, I'm keeping up my competition with the prisoners that they keep a better yard than I do, and I, don't, I think they're winning, but uh, we're, we're neck and neck here for a little bit. But uh, no, we don't have any problems with it. We don't have any uh, issues. Um, they keep everything neat and tidy, and I like that. The neighborhood shared by the prison and the Wendells also includes the Lansing Historical Museum and Leavenworth County Fire District No. 1, both located on prison property. The fire department utilized inmate labor to aid in the construction of the fire station. In 1989, the Lansing Santa Fe Railroad Depot faced eventual demolition unless it was moved. In 1992, the prison offered grounds for the depot, which now houses the Lansing Historical Museum's artifacts. In July 2007, a fire threatened to destroy the museum and its contents. However, thanks to local firefighters stationed next door and LCF staff and inmates, the fire was quickly contained and losses minimized. The city would have lost a lot of artifacts out of that because um, we would eventually got them all out of there, but as much water as we put on that building, because it was up in the attic, it was hard to get to. Uh, water was coming down, plaster was coming down, sheetrock was coming down, so we would have lost a, a lot of stuff if we hadn't got it all out of there as quickly as we did. So they were very instrumental in removing the equipment or saving the artifacts. Prison staff and inmates provide more than just emergency help. Lansing residents often see inmates working in the community on a regular basis. I think one of the unique aspects about the relationship between LCF and the city of Lansing is the degree that we do work together. I um, mean, you can go to lots of prisons in the country that have, you know, work crews that do this or do that. They all, you know, go out and whip weeds and things like that. Um, but I think uh, we've undertaken a lot of joint projects and that were just mutually beneficial. Lansing has and continues to benefit from inmate labor on projects involving the school district, 
the city wastewater plant, and local parks facilities. On a smaller scale, there are more specialized tasks that utilize inmate talents. Well, I think if we have a special type project that where we can use their type of talent, they are more than willing to cooperate. Uh, basically, what it costs the city is the cost of the supplies. Uh, the labor is always free. The prisoners enjoy doing it, and I think it's beneficial to both sides, actually. It gives the prisoners something to do that's worthwhile, and it gives us a product. One of the inmates finished products relates to a proposed prison museum to chronicle the history of four prisons located in Leavenworth County. The Kansas Regional Prisons Museum would sit on prison grounds near the Lansing Historical Museum. That product also led to a unique encounter. They built a model. It's a scale model of what the museum will look like. They did a magnificent job. So I offered to buy them lunch. And the warden took us up on that. And of course, we expected it to be things like steak, baked potato, that kind of thing. And what they really wanted was triple cheeseburgers, peanut butter parfaits, milkshakes, and french fries from Dairy Queen. So we bought them, took them inside, and I actually went into their work area and had lunch with them. And it was very, very enlightening. Inmate skills are also used to serve area children through the recycling of old bicycles. Inmates use their talents to refurbish the old bikes, which are donated to needy families. Prisoners who refurbish the bikes do the work in addition to their regular prison jobs. And what we do with our bicycles is that through various community groups, what they'll do is they'll come to town and they'll identify ahead of time, and it's whether it's the Kiwanis, the JCs, or whoever out there that, um, that service their local communities on, on a more local basis. They, they know who the people in need out there are. They know who's had the house fires. They know who's you know, had the bankruptcies. They know who's in trouble in town as far as needing some help and some support from outside. And so they'll tell us, hey, can you get me a... a a 10-year-old girl bike, can you get me a 14-year-old boy's bike, can you get me an adult bike? And, and so twice a year, they all pour into town and we will, we will uh, I think last year, I think we distributed probably around 1,000 bicycles last year. Another community outreach activity is the Safe Harbor Prison Dogs Program. Inmates train and socialize rescue dogs, which prepares them for eventual adoption. On an economic scale, the LCF's impact on Lansing is significant, with an annual budget of nearly $33 million and around 1,000 employees, money is being spent in and around Lansing. Even if they don't live within the city limits, you know, for rent and taxes and all that kind of thing, uh, there's still a lot of shopping they do here when they're coming to work, getting off work, during lunch hours, they'll run downtown, they utilize local restaurants, um, they run up to the, to the local stores during breaks or during, as soon as they get off work on the way home, they'll stop, oh yeah, I need to stop the drugstore, I need to stop the grocery store, those kind of things. And so when you take, um, you know, anywhere from 25 to $30 million in salaries, uh, that's a huge bonus to, to the economy of the local area. The prison and the city have a symbiotic relationship. The Lansing population provides a quality workforce to staff the prison. City departments lend equipment to the LCF for projects. City infrastructure is built with the prison in mind. These two entities truly are good neighbors. Despite the positive relationship between city and prison, many outsiders still believe that living in a prison town is dangerous. Occasionally someone new will come into town and they'll ask a question about the prison, whether there's any danger, and I just tell them, no, I personally live two blocks from the prison. I have never had an issue with it, and it's never been a real problem in this city. Uh, there has never been a serious incident. There was a car stolen about 25 years ago from one of the escaped prisoners. There has been clothing stolen off wash lines so they could get out of the prison uniform into some work clothes. Other than that, there's never really been anybody hurt or harassed or molested. The reality of living near the Lansing Correctional Facility is more reminiscent of a Norman Rockwell painting than a dark, seedy movie about prison life. Combined with the prison's consistent, positive economic impact, the city of Lansing is considered by many to be recession-proof. The great working relationship between the city and the prison and its benefit for all involved is surprising to many outside observers, but the secret is slowly getting out.